got a sickness uh, or a disease uh, and, 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 and somebody will give you a cure somebody will give you some medicine and you'll go and say well I don't think I'll take that right now can I tell you that's just as ignorant as saying that Jesus is the cure he's the one who can deliver me from sin and death and hell and the grave but I don't think I'll mess with him right now hello that there is a place he said the wicked if you refuse the mercy of God and the grace of God and the love of God if you refuse what Christ Jesus did on the cross of Calvary he said there's a place that is prepared for those in the day of evil believe me mark my word there is coming a day just as there is coming a day for the saints of God who are trusting in Jesus that the dead in Christ are going to rise is anybody out there this morning the dead in Christ are going to rise and then we who are called up who are remain we're going to be caught up with Jesus in the air just like there's that day there is a day there is a day that when Jesus when you stand before God and God says why do I need to let you in to my heaven and you're going to stand there and say well I did good works in your name I, I did good deeds. I cast out devils in your name. Now, how that happens, I don't know. But I did good deeds in your name. I did good works in your name. I was faithful to the church in your name. And my name was on the church roll. And Jesus is going to look at those that have not committed themselves unto him and say, depart from me. For I never knew you. Salvation is more than just the religiosity of coming to church on Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, and Wednesday nights. Salvation is more than the religiosity of having your name on a roll somewhere. Salvation is more than just the motions of coming to church. Salvation is a relationship with Jesus Christ where he's covered me by his blood. And my sins. We talked about it this morning. The Old Testament had a type of atonement whereby it was a band aid over a broken bone. The reason I know it was a band aid is because every year they had to offer up a blood sacrifice. Every single year. But when Jesus came, when Jesus came and died on the cross for my sin and his blood was shed it wasn't a band-aid effect my friends he mended the broken hearts and bind up their wounds oh thank God his mercy and his grace his blood even stretches out to the year 2006 if you let him cover you with his blood They are prepared. The evil, those that are uncommitted to the Lord, are prepared. Now, we all know that hell is prepared for who? The devil and his fallen angels. But if we do not commit ourselves unto the Lord, we'll join them the same way. And just as, what was it, Wednesday night? I got happy over that verse in Revelations where it says that Satan will be tormented day and night forever and forever. Can I tell you the sad part about that is is everybody that's in hell with him will be tormented day and night forever and forever. But thank God there is an escape from hell. It's committing unto the Lord. Is committing unto the Lord. Watch this. Because then he talks about the admirable person. And in verse 1, he says, The admirable person is that person that commits their heart unto the Lord. He says, The preparations of the heart, you know, they, they might be a man. In other words, I don't need to prepare and make my plans for myself. I need to first find myself at an altar of prayer and commit my heart unto God Almighty. 
to give him my heart, my everything in my life. Oh, hallelujah. This is where salvation begins and sanctification continues. Hello? Oh, I know sometimes we'll preach uh, on sanctification and it's outward this and outward that and outward you've got to do this outward and you've got to do that outward. But before God ever deals with your outward man, he's going to deal with that heart, that soul, that life. Jeremiah said it this way. God spoke through Jeremiah and said, I will give them one heart and I like this, one way. Now see a lot of holiness folks should have shouted right there. I will give him one heart and one way. Sanctification is really this. It is understanding that God has prepared but one way. And since he's prepared that one way, you need to walk ye in the way. Oh. We got some folk don't know how to commit to the Lord and they're saved one minute and they're lost the next minute. They might have come to church and heard the preacher preach and felt pretty good. But then on Monday, when they had to go out and face the world, they lost every bit of that joy that they had. Can I tell you the most miserable person in the world is the person that has not committed themselves unto the Lord. Thank God, as the old song says, the old account was set a long ago. I made up my mind, I'm gonna serve Jesus and not turn back. Hallelujah. The song says, Though none go with me. Let, me. let me just pause right there and sink that in. Absorb that for a minute. Though none go with me. I like picking on Brother Craig. I love him. And I love you. You know that, right? But better than left-handed conk, yes. Amen. But you know what? I love you enough that if you still are hard-headed enough to not to want to serve Jesus, at some point I might still love you, but I got to leave you behind. Because though none go with me, I will still follow him. You might be waiting on mother or father or brother or sister. You might be waiting on husband or wife. But you need to commit yourself unto the Lord and say, though none go with me, I will still follow him. Let me tell you something. I dare you, if this pastor, God forbid, should ever fall by the wayside. Listen, there are a lot of many people who have put their trust in preachers and they've gotten lost because the preacher failed. But if I ever fall, let me tell you something. If I don't go, you still go. Go without me if you have to. But go in the name of Jesus. Some may trust in horses and some may trust in chariots. But we will trust in the name of the Lord. Well, glory. Mm. Let me.